Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. Adam here with Parable of the Vineyard. Today, I wanted to do something a little bit different for our Shabbat gathering. I wanted to read the first epistle of Clement to the Corinthians. If you do research on this, it's commonly reported or said that this was written either in 70 AD or 96 AD. Nevertheless, most would agree that this is authentically written by uh, Clement, who was the leader of the assembly in Rome. He was uh, Peter's successor. He was um, Peter's understudy, and um, you know, if you do your re if you do research on this book, this was read aloud in a lot of the assemblies well into the fourth and fifth century. So whether this book is inspired or not, um, you know the early church, the early assembly, um, at least they they thought it was words that needed to be heeded and and read. Um, and uh, the other night, my wife and I were we had some uh, some reading time and. We were just uh, thinking about praying about what to read, and um, we're like Romans, hmm, yeah, Acts, yeah, and then I felt led to say, well, how about First Clement? And we we've only read this book once or twice, and it was a year ago. Um, and um, as we read this, we quickly realized um, that this is an important book, and this should be read before the assemblies today. Uh, so we wanted to go ahead and do that, and. Um, what we'll find in this is there was a lot of um, there was a lot of uprising in the assembly of Corinth, and um, you know it made me think about how a lot of the victories that uh, Israel gained were, were of course because the Most High gave them the victories, and a lot of those victories were because he would um, turn the enemy against each other, so the enemy would fight themselves and destroy themselves. Now on the opposite side, I want I just wonder if the enemy follows that tactic in trying to incite brothers and sisters to fight themselves instead of keeping their eyes on the true enemy. And so we see some of that here in this epistle. I find it uh, quite a blessing, uh, you know, um, whether this is inspired or not, well, that's really, uh, that's for each of us to determine and to test for ourselves. There uh, will be a free, there is a free uh, PDF version of this. It'll be in the description box uh, with a link there, a download link, as well as in the um, the comment section. So if you'd like to, to read this book on your own time or if you just want to follow along while we're reading, because um, we won't have the, the words on the screen this time. Uh, we, as you can see, we're not in a low, no, normal location. We are here in uh, Conroe, Texas at this time. Um, so <clears throat> with that being said, let's pray and we'll read the first epistle of Clement to the Corinthians. Father Yahweh Most High, we just come before you and bless you in your amazing son's name, Yahusha HaMashiach, how we understand it. And Father, we just thank you for the free gift of salvation that uh, has been offered through uh, his offering on the cross for us. And we, we thank you for the washing of our sins. And uh, though they were red as scarlet and crimson, they are white as snow. And Father, we just thank you for the ability, ability to repent of our sins. And we thank you for your forgiveness and your mercy and your grace that you give us. And may we have the same uh, mercy and grace with each other uh, with our faults. And Father, we just bless you and, and thank you for your Holy Spirit, which guides us. May it guide us tonight as we read this. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. So I plan on just really kind of this mostly just to read through. I may stop and just have a few comments. Uh, I want to try to keep that to a minimum because I want this to mostly be a reading. So <clears throat> here we go. The first epistle of Clement to the Corinthians. Prologue. The assembly of Elohim which sojourns in Rome to the assembly of Elohim which sojourns in Corinth to them which are called and sanctified by the will of Elohim through our master Yahushua HaMashiach. That's how the best we understand our Messiah's name. Grace to you and peace from Almighty Elohim through Yahushua HaMashiach be multiplied. Chapter 1. By reason of the sudden and repeated calamities and reverses which are befalling us, brethren, we consider that we have been somewhat tardy in giving heed to the matters of dispute that have arisen among you, dearly beloved, and to the detestable and unholy sedition, which is uprising against leadership, so alien and strange to the elect of Elohim, which a few headstrong and self-willed persons have kindled such a pitch of madness that your name, once revered and renowned and lovely in the sight of all men, has been greatly reviled. For who that had sojourned among you did not approve your most virtuous and steadfast faith, who did not admire your sober and forbearing piety in Mashiach, Messiah, 
Who did not publish abroad your magnificent disposition of hospitality? Who did not congratulate you on your perfect and sound knowledge? For you did all things without respect of persons, and you walked after the ordinances of Elohim, submitting yourselves to your rulers and rendering to the older men among you the honor which is their due. On the young, too, you enjoined modest and seemly thoughts, and the women you charged to perform all their duties in a blameless and seemly and pure conscience, cherishing their own husbands as is meet. And you taught them to keep in the rule of obedience and to manage the affairs in their household in seemliness, seemliness with all discretion. Chapter 2. And you were all lowly in mind and free from arrogance, yielding rather than claiming submission, more glad to give than to receive, and content with the provisions which Elohim supplies. And giving heed to his words, you laid them up diligently in your hearts, and his sufferings were before your eyes. Thus a profound and rich peace was given to all, and an insatiable desire of doing good, an abundant outpouring also of the Holy Spirit fell upon all. And being full of holy counsel, in excellent zeal, and with a pious confidence, ye stretched out your hands to Almighty Elohim, supplicating him to be propitious, if unwillingly you had committed any sin. Ye had conflict day and night for all the brotherhood, that the number of his elect might be saved with fearfulness and intentness of mind. You were sincere and simple and free from malice one towards another. Every sedition and every schism was abominable to you. You mourned over the transgressions of your neighbors. You judged their shortcomings to be your own. You repented not of any well-doing, but were ready unto every good work. Being adorned with a most virtuous and honorable life, you performed your duties in the fear of him. The commandments and the ordinances of Yahuwah were written on the table, tables of your hearts. Chapter 3. All glory and enlargement was given to you, and that was fulfilled which is written, My beloved ate and drank and was enlarged and waxed fat and kicked. Hence comes jealousy and envy, strife, sedition, persecution and tumult, war and captivity. So men were stirred up, the mean against the honorable the ill-reputed against the highly reputed, the foolish against the wise, the young against the elder. For this cause righteousness and peace stand aloof, while each man has forsaken the fear of Yahuwah and become pure blind in the faith of him, neither walks in the ordinances of his commandments, nor lives according to that which becomes of Messiah. But each goes after the lusts of his evil heart, seeing that they have conceived an unrighteous and ungodly jealousy through which also death entered into the world. Chapter 4 For so it is written, And came to pass after certain days that Cain brought of the fruits of the earth a sacrifice unto Elohim. And Abel he also brought of the firstlings of the sheep and of their fatness. And Elohim looked upon Abel and upon his gifts, but unto Cain and unto his sacrifice he gave no heed. And Cain sorrowed exceedingly, and his countenance fell. And Elohim said unto Cain, Wherefore are you very sorrowful, and wherefore did your countenance fall? If you had offered a right, and has not divided it a right, did you not sin? Hold your peace. Unto you shall he turn, and you shall rule over him. And Cain said unto Abel his brother, Let us go over unto the plain. And it came to pass, while they were in the plain, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother, and slew him. You see, brethren, jealousy and envy wrought a brother's murder. By reason of jealousy, our father Jacob ran away from the face of Esau, his brother. Jealousy caused Joseph to be persecuted even unto death and to come even unto bondage. Jealousy compelled Moshe, Moses, to flee from the face of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, while it was said to him by his own countrymen, Who made you a judge and a decider over us? Are you going to slay me even as yesterday you slew the Egyptian? By reason of jealousy, Aaron and Miriam were lodged outside the camp. Jealousy brought Dathan and Abiram down alive to Hades because they made sedition against Moshe, the servant of Elohim. By reason of jealousy, David was envied not only by the Philistines, but was persecuted also by Saul. 
chapter 5. But to pass from the examples of ancient days, let us come to those champions who lived nearest to our time. Let us set before us the noble examples which belong to our generation. By reason of jealousy and envy, the greatest and most righteous pillars of the assembly were persecuted and contended even unto death. Let us set before our eyes the good apostles. There was Peter, who by reason of unrighteous jealousy endured not not one, not, I'm sorry, endured not one, but many labors, and thus having borne his testimony, went to his appointed place of glory. By reason of jealousy and strife, Paul, by his example, pointed out the prize of patient endurance. After that, he had been seven times in bonds, had been driven into exile, had been stoned, had preached in the east and in the west, he won the noble renown, which was the reward of his faith, having taught righteousness unto the whole world, and having reached the farthest bounds of the West. And when he had borne his testimony before the rulers, so he departed from the world and went unto the holy place, having been found a notable pattern of patient endurance. Chapter 6. Unto these men of holy lives was gathered a vast multitude of the elect, who through many indignities and tortures, being the victims of jealousy, set a brave example among ourselves. By reason of jealousy, women being persecuted after that they had suffered cruel and unholy insults as Danaids and Derse safely reached the goal in the race of faith and received a noble reward, feeble, uh, feeble though they were in body. Interesting. Jealousy has estranged wives from their husbands and changed the sayings of our father Adam. This now is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Jealousy and strife have overthrown great cities and uprooted great nations. Chapter 7. These things, dearly beloved, we write not only as admonishing you, but also putting ourselves in remembrance, for we are in the same lists and the same contest awaits us. Wherefore, let us forsake idle and vain thoughts, and let us conform to the glorious and venerable rule which has been handed down to us. And let us see what is good and what is pleasant and what is acceptable in the sight of him that made us. Let us fix our eyes on the blood of Mashiach and understand how precious it is unto his Father, because being shed for our salvation, it won for the whole world the grace of repentance. Let us review all the generations in turn, and learn how from generation to generation the Master has given a place for repentance unto them that desire to turn to him. Noah preached repentance, and they that obeyed were saved. Jonah preached destruction unto the men of Nineveh, but they, repenting of their sins, obtained pardon of Elohim by their supplication and received sal salvation, albeit they were aliens from Elohim. Chapter 8. The ministers of the grace of Elohim through the Holy Spirit spake concerning repentance. Yes, and the master of the universe himself spake concerning repentance with an oath. For as I live, says Yahuwah, I desire not the death of the sinner so much as his repentance. And he added also a merciful judgment. Repent ye, O house of Israel, of your iniquity. Say unto the sons of my people, Though your sins reach from the earth even unto the heaven, and though they be redder than scarlet and blacker than sackcloth, and ye turn unto me with your whole heart and say, Father, I will give ear unto you as unto a holy people. And in another place he says on this wise, Wash, be you clean. Put away your iniquities from your souls out of my sight. Cease from your iniquities. Learn to do good. Seek judgment. Defend him that is wronged. Give judgment for the orphan and execute righteousness for the widow. And come, let us reason together, he says. And though your sins be as crimson, I will make them as white as snow. And though they be as scarlet, I will make them as white as wool. And if you be willing, and you will hearken unto me, you shall eat the good things of the earth. But if you be not willing, neither hearken unto me, a sword shall devour you, for the mouth of Yahuwah has spoken these things. Seeing then that he desires all his beloved to be partakers of repentance, he confirmed it by an act of his almighty will. Chapter 9. Wherefore, let us be obedient unto his excellent and glorious will, and presenting ourselves as suppliants of his mercy and goodness, 
let us fall down before him and betake ourselves unto his compassions, forsaking the vain toil and the strife and the jealousy which leads unto death. Let us fix our eyes on them that ministered perfectly unto his excellent glory. Let us set before us Enoch, who being found righteous in obedience was translated, and his death was not found. Noah, being found faithful by his ministration, preached regeneration unto the world, and through him the master saved the living creatures that enter, entered into the ark in Concord. Chapter 10. Abraham, who was called the friend, was found faithful in that he rendered obedience unto the words of Elohim. He, through obedience, went forth from his land and from his kindred and from his father's house, that leaving a scanty land and a feeble kindred and a mean house, he might inherit the promises of Elohim. For he says unto him, Go forth from your land and from your kindred and from your father's house unto a land which I shall show you, and I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you and will magnify your name, and you shall be blessed, and I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you, and in you shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. And again, when he was parted from Lot, Elohim said unto him, Look up with your eyes, and behold, from the place where you are now, unto the north, and the south, and the sunrise, and the sea, for all the land which you see. I will give it unto you, and to your seed forever. And I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. If any man can count the dust of the earth, then shall your seed also be counted. And again he says, Elohim led Abraham forth and said unto him, Look up unto heaven and count the stars and see whether you can number them. So shall your seed be. And Abraham believed Elohim and it was reckoned unto him for righteousness. For his faith and hospitality, a son was given unto him in old age. In old age. And by obedience, he offered him a sacrifice unto Elohim on one of the mountains which he showed him. Chapter 11. For his hospitality and godliness, Lot was saved from Sodom when all the country round about was judged by fire and brimstone. The master, having thus foreshown, foreshown that he forsakes not them which set their hope on him, but appoints unto punishment and torment them which swerve aside. For when his wife had gone forth with him, being otherwise minded and in, not in accord, she was appointed for a sign hereunto, so that she became a pillar of salt unto this day, that it might be known unto all men that they which are double-minded and they which doubt concerning the power of Elohim are set for a judgment and for a token unto all the generations. Chapter 12. For her faith and hospitality, Rahab the harlot was saved. For when the spies were sent forth unto Jericho by Joshua, the son of Nun, the king of the land perceived that they were come to spy out his country, and sent forth men to seize them, that being seized, they might be put to death. So the hospitable Rahab received them, and hid them in the upper chamber under the flax stalks. And when the messengers of the king came near and said, The spies of our land entered in unto you, bring them forth, for the king so orders. Then she answered, The men truly whom you seek entered in unto me, but they departed forthwith and are sojourning on the way. And she pointed out to them the opposite road. And she said unto the men, Of a surety I perceive that Yahweh your Elohim delivers this city unto you. For the fear and the dread of you is fallen upon the inhabitants thereof. When therefore it shall come to pass that you take it, save me and the house of my father. And they said unto her, It shall be even so as you have spoken unto us. Whensoever therefore you perceive that we are coming, you shall gather all your folk beneath your roof, and they shall be saved. For as many as shall be found without the house shall perish. And moreover, they gave her a sign that she should hang out from her house a scarlet thread, thereby showing beforehand that through the blood of the master, there shall be redemption unto all them that believe and hope on Elohim. That's powerful. You see, dearly beloved, not only faith, but prophecy is found in the woman. Chapter 13. Let us therefore be lowly-minded, brethren, laying aside all arrogance and conceit and folly and anger, and let us do that which is written, 
For the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit says, Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom, nor the strong in his strength, neither the rich in his riches. riches. But he that boasts, let him boast in Yahuwah, that he may seek him out and do judgment and righteousness, most of all remembering the words of the Master Yahusha, Yahusha which he spake, teaching forbearance and long suffering. For thus he spake, Have mercy that you may receive mercy. Forgive that it may be forgiven to you. As you do, so shall it be done to you. As you give, so shall it be given unto you. As you judge, so shall you be judged. As you show kindness, so shall kindness be shown unto you. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured with all to you. With this commandment and these precepts, let us confirm ourselves that we may walk in obedience to his hallowed words with lowliness of mind. For the holy word says, Upon whom shall I look, save upon him that is gentle and quiet and fears my oracles? Chapter 14. Therefore it is right and proper, brethren, that we should be obedient unto Elohim rather than follow those who in arrogance and unruliness have set themselves up as leaders in abominable jealousy. For we shall bring upon us no common harm, but rather great peril, if we surrender ourselves recklessly to the purposes of men who launch out into strife and seditions, so as to estrange us from that which is right. Let us be good one towards another, according to the compassion and sweetness of him that made us. For it is written, the good shall be dwellers in the land, and the innocent shall be left on it, but they that transgress shall be destroyed utterly from it. And again he says, I saw the ungodly lifted up on high, and exalted as the cedars of Lebanon, and I passed by, and behold he was not, and sought out his place, and I found it not. Keep innocence, and behold uprightness, for there is a remnant for the peaceful man. Chapter 15. Therefore, let us cleave unto them that practice peace with godliness, and not unto them that desire peace with dissimulation. For he says in a certain place, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And again, they blessed with their mouth, but they cursed with their heart. And again, he says, They loved him with their mouth, and with their tongue they lied unto him, and their heart was not upright with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. For this cause, let the deceitful lips be made dumb, which speak iniquity against the righteous. And again, may Yahuwah utterly destroy all the deceitful lips, the tongue that speaks proud things, even them that say, Let us magnify our tongue, our lips are our own, who is master over us? For the misery of the needy and for the groaning of the poor, I will now arise, says Yahuwah. I will set him in safety. I will deal boldly by him. Chapter 16. For Mashiach is with them that are of lowly mind, not with them that exalt themselves over the flock. The scepter of the majesty of Elohim, even our master Yahushua HaMashiach, came not in the pomp of arrogance or of, or of pride, though he might have done so, but in lowliness of mind, according as the Holy Spirit spake concerning him. For he says, Master, who believed our report? And to whom was the arm of Yahweh revealed? We announced him in his presence. As a child, was he as a root in a thirsty ground? There is no form in him, neither glory, and we beheld him. And he had no form nor comeliness, but his form was mean, lacking more than the form of men. He was a man of stripes and of toil, and knowing how to bear infirmity. For his face is turned away. He was dishonored and held of no account. He bears our sins and suffers pain for our sakes. And we accounted him to be in toil and in stripes and in affliction. He was wounded for our sins and has been afflicted for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his bruises we are healed. Hallelujah. We all went astray like sheep. Each man went astray in his own path. And Yahuwah delivered him over for our sins, and he opened not his mouth because he is afflicted. As a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before his shearers is dumb, so opens he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away. His generation who shall declare? For his life is taken away from the earth. 
For the iniquities of my people he has come to death. And I will give the wicked for his burial, and the rich for his death. For he wrought no iniquity, neither was guile found in his mouth. And Yahuwah desired to cleanse him from his stripes. If you offer for sin, your soul shall see a long and lived seed. And Yahweh desires to take away from the toil of his soul, to show him light and to mold him with understanding, to justify a just one that is a good servant unto many, and he shall bear their sins. Therefore, he shall inherit many and shall divide the spoils of the strong because his soul was delivered unto death and he was reckoned unto the transgressors and he bare the sins of many and for their sins he was delivered up. And again, he himself says, But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and an outcast from the people. All they that beheld me mocked me, and they spake with their lips. They wagged their heads, saying, He hoped on Yahuwah, let him deliver him, or let him save him, for he desires him. You see, dearly beloved, what is the pattern that has been given unto us? For if Yahuwah was thus lowly of mind, what should we do, who through him have been brought under the yoke of his grace? Let us be imitators also of them which, uh, which went about in goatskins and sheepskins, preaching the coming of Mashiach. We mean Elijah and Elisha, and likewise Ezekiel the prophets, and besides them those men also that obtained a good report. Abraham obtained an exceeding good report and was called the friend of Elohim, and looking steadfastly on the glory of Elohim, he says in lowliness of mind, But I am dust and ashes. Moreover, Concerning Job also it is thus written, And Job was righteous and unblameable, one that was true and honored Elohim in its state, abstained from evil. Yet he himself accuses himself, saying, No man from filth, no, not though his life be but for a day. Moses was called faithful in all his house, and through his ministration Elohim judged Egypt with the, with the plagues and the torments which befell them. Howbeit he also... Though greatly glorified, yet spake no proud words, but said, When an oracle was given to him at the bush, Who am I that you send me? Nay, I am feeble of speech and slow of tongue. And again he says, But I am smoke from the pot. Chapter 18 But what must we say of David that obtained a good report, of whom Elohim said, I have found a man after my own heart, David the son of Jesse, with eternal mercy have I anointed him. Yet he too says unto Elohim, Have mercy upon me, O Elohim, according to your great mercy, and according to the multitude of your compassions, blot out my iniquity. Wash me yet more from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge mine iniquity, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only did I sin, and I wrought evil in your sight, that you may be justified in your words, and may conquer in your pleading. For behold, in iniquities was I conceived, and in sins did my mother bear me. For behold, you have loved truth, the dark and hidden things of your wisdom has you showed unto me. You shall sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Wash me, and I shall become whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones which have been humbled shall rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Make a clean heart within me, O Elohim, and renew a right spirit in mine inmost parts. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, from me. Restore, restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and strengthen me with a princely spirit. I will teach sinners your ways, and godless men shall be converted unto you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O Elohim, the Elohim of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in your righteousness. Yahuwah, you shall open my mouth, and my lips shall declare your praise. For if you had desired sacrifice, I would have given it. In whole burnt offerings you will have no pleasure. A sacrifice unto Elohim is a contrite spirit. A contrite and humbled heart Elohim will not despise. Chapter 19 The humility, therefore, and the submissiveness of so many and so great men who have thus obtained a good report has Though has through obedience made better not only us, but also the generations which were before us, even them that received his oracles in fear and truth. Seeing then that we have been partakers of many great and glorious doings, let us hasten to return unto the goal of peace 
which has been handed down from us to the beginning. And let us look steadfastly unto the Father and the Maker of the whole world, and cleave unto his splendid and excellent gifts of peace and benefits. Let us behold him in our mind, and let us look with the eyes of our soul unto his long suffering. Let us note how free from anger he is towards all his creatures. Chapter 20. The heavens are moved by his direction and obey him in peace. Day and night accomplish the course assigned to them by him, without hindrance one to another. The sun and the moon and the dancing stars according to his appointment circle, appointment circle in harmony with the bounds assigned to them without any swerving aside. Interesting, it says circle. Let me read that again. Chapter 20, verse 3. The sun and the moon and the dancing stars according to his appointment circle in harmony with the bounds assigned to them without any swerving aside. The earth bearing fruit in fulfillment of his will at our proper seasons puts forth the food that supplies abundantly, abundantly both men and beasts and all living things which are thereupon, making no dissension, neither altering anything which he has decreed. Moreover, the inscrutable depths of the abysses and the unutterable statutes of the nether regions are constrained by the same ordinances. The basin of the boundless sea, gathered together by his workmanship into its reservoirs, passes not the barriers wherewith it is surrounded, but even as he orders it, so it does. Seems like uh, Clement was familiar with biblical cosmology at that time. For he said, So far shall you come, and your waves shall be broken within you. The ocean which is impassable for men, and the worlds beyond it, are directed by the same ordinances of the Master. The seasons of spring and summer and autumn and winter give way in succession one to another in peace. The winds in their several quarters at their proper season fulfill their ministry without disturbance. And the ever-flowing fountains created for enjoyment and health without fail give their breasts which, are, which sustain the life for men. Yea, the smallest of the living things come together in concord and peace. All these things the great creator and master of the universe ordered to be in peace and concord, doing unto all things, but far, far beyond the rest unto who have taken refuge in his compassionate mercies through our master Yahushua HaMashiach, to whom be the glory and the majesty forever and ever. Amen. Chapter 21. Look ye, brethren, lest his benefits, which are many, turn unto judgment to all of us, if we walk not worthily, worthily of him, and do these things which are good and well-pleasing in his sight with concord. For he says in a certain place, The Spirit of Yahuwah is a lamp searching the closets of the belly. Let us see how near he is, and how that nothing escapes him of our thoughts or our devices which we make. It is right, therefore, that we should not be deserters from his will. Let us rather give offense to foolish and senseless men who exalt themselves and boast in the arrogance of their words than to Elohim. Let us fear the master Yahusha, whose blood was given for us. Let us reverence our rulers. Let us honor our elders. Let us instruct our young men in the lesson of the fear of Elohim. Let us guide our women toward that which is good. Let them show forth their lovely disposition of purity. Let them prove their sincere affection of gentleness. Let them make manifest the moderation of their tongue through their silence. Let them show their love, not in uh, factitious preferences, but without partiality towards all them that fear Elohim, in holiness. Let our children be partakers of the instruction which is in Mashiach. Let them learn how lowliness of mind prevails with Elohim what power chaste love has with Elohim, how the fear of him is good and great and saves all them that walk therein in a pure mind with holiness. For he is the searcher out of the intents and desires whose breath is in us, and when he lists, he shall take it away. Chapter 22. <clears throat> now all these things, the faith which is in Mashiach confirms. For he himself, through the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, the, thus invites us, Come, my children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of Yahuwah. What man is he that desires life and loves to see good days? Make your tongue to cease from evil, and your lips that they speak no guile. Turn aside from evil and do good. Seek peace and ensue it. 
The eyes of Yahweh are over the righteous, and his ears are turned to their prayers. But the face of Yahweh is upon them that do evil, to destroy their memorial from the earth. The righteous cried out, and Yahweh heard him, and delivered him from all his troubles. Many are the troubles of the righteous, and Yahweh shall deliver him from them all. And again, many are the stripes of the sinner, but them that set their hope on Yahweh, mercy shall compass about. Chapter 23. The Father, who is pitiful in all things and ready to do good, has compassion on them that fear him, and kindly and loving, lovingly bestow his favors on them that draw nigh unto him with a single mind. Therefore, let us not be double-minded, neither let our soul indulge in idle humors respecting his exceeding and glorious gifts. Let this scripture be far from us, where he says, Wretched are the double-minded, which doubt in their soul and say, These things we did hear in the days of our fathers also, and behold, we have grown old, and none of these things has befallen us. You fools, compare yourselves unto a tree, take a vine, first it sheds its leaves, then a shoot comes, then a leaf, then a flower, and after these a sour berry, then a full ripe grape. You see that in a little time the fruit of the tree attains unto mellowness. This is an excellent parable, very comparable to what we read in Leviticus 19 about the growth of a tree, uh, what we see in the parable of the seed from Messiah. This is, this is excellent. Let me read this again. This is 1 Clement 23, 4. You fools, compare yourselves unto a tree. Take a vine. First it sheds its leaves, then a shoot comes, then a leaf, then a flower, and after these a sour berry, then a full ripe grape. You see that in a little time the fruit of the tree attains unto mellowness. That's deep. Of a truth quickly and suddenly shall his will be accomplished, the scripture also bearing witness to it, saying, He shall come quickly and shall not tarry. And Yahweh shall come suddenly into his temple, even the Holy One whom you expect. Chapter 24. Let us understand, dearly beloved, how the Master continually shows unto the resurrection, shows us unto the resurrection that shall be hereafter, whereof he made the Master Yahushua HaMashiach the first fruit when he raised him from the dead. Let us behold, dearly beloved, the resurrection which happens at its proper season. Day and night show unto us the resurrection. The night falls asleep and the day arises. The day departs and the night comes on. That's interesting. First Clement 24, 3. Day and night show unto us the resurrection. The night falls asleep and the day arises. The day departs and the night comes on. Let us mark the fruits and how in what manner the sowing takes place. The sower goes forth and casts into the earth each of the seeds and these falling into the earth dry and bare decay. Then out of their decay, the mightiness of the master's providence raises them up. And from being one, they increase manifold and bear fruit. Chapter 25. Let us consider the marvelous sign which is seen in the regions of the east, that is, in the parts about Arabia. There is a bird which is named the phoenix. This being the only one of its kind lives for 500 years. And when it has now reached the time of its dissolution that it should die, it makes for itself a coffin of frankincense and myrrh and other spices, into the which, in the fullness of time, it enters, and so it dies. But as the flesh rots, a certain worm is engendered, which is nurtured from the moisture of the dead creature and puts forth wings, and then, when it is grown lusty, it takes up that coffin where the bones of its parent, and carrying them, journeying from the from the country of Arabia, even unto Egypt, to the place called the City of the Sun. And in the daytime, in the sight of all, flying to the altar of the sun, it lays them thereupon, and as this is done, it sets forth to return. So the priests examine the registers of the times, and they that find it has come when the five hundred year is completed. Chapter 26. Do we then think it to be a great and marvelous thing if the creator of the universe shall bring about the resurrection of them that have served him with holiness and the assurance of a good faith, seeing that he shows to us even by a bird the magnificence of his promise? For he says in a certain place, And you shall raise me up, and I will praise you. And I went to rest and slept. I was awakened, for you are with me. 
And again, Job says, And you shall raise this my flesh, which has endured all these things. Chapter 27. With this hope, therefore, let our souls be bound unto him that is faithful in his promises, that is righteous in his judgment. He that commanded not to lie, much more shall he himself not lie. For nothing is impossible with Elohim save to lie. Therefore, let our faith in him be kindled within us, and let us understand that all things are nigh unto him. By a word of his testimony, he compacted the universe, and by a word he can destroy it. Who shall say unto him, What have you done? Or who shall resist the might of his strength? When he listeth, and when he and as he listeth, he will do all things, and nothing shall pass away of those things that he has decreed. All things are in his sight, and nothing escapes his counsel. Seeing that the heavens declare the glory of Elohim, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork, day, un day utters word unto day, and night proclaims knowledge unto night. And there are neither words nor speeches whose voices are not heard. 20, chapter 28. Since therefore all things are seen and heard, let us fear him and forsake the abominable lusts of evil works, that we may be shielded by his mercy from the coming judgments. For where can any of us escape from his strong hand? And what world will receive any of them that desert from his service? For the holy writing says in a certain place, where shall, I, where shall I go, and where shall I be hidden from your face? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I depart into the farthest parts of the earth, there is your right hand. If I make my bed in the depths, there is your spirit. Where then shall one depart, or where shall one flee from him that embraces the universe? Chapter 29. Let us therefore approach him in holiness of soul, lifting up pure and undefiled hands unto him, with love towards our gentle and compassionate Father, who made us an elect portion unto himself. For thus it is written, The Most High divides the nations. When he dispersed the sons of Adam, he fixed the boundaries of the nations according to the number of the angels of Elohim. It's interesting. So um, Clement was familiar with... Um, the Septuagint version of the scriptures because the Masoretic says according to the sons of Israel whereas the, Mas the um, Septuagint says according to the angels of Elohim this is in Deuteronomy 32 or 33 his people Jacob became the portion of Yahweh and Israel the measurement of his inheritance and in another place he says behold Yahweh takes for himself a nation out of the midst of the nations as a man takes the first fruits of his threshing floor, and the Holy of Holies shall come forth from that nation. Chapter 30. Seeing then that we are the special portion of a holy Elohim, let us do all things that pertain unto holiness, forsaking evil speakings, abominable and impure embraces, drunkenness and tumults and hateful lusts, abominable, abominable adultery, hateful pride. For Elohim, he says, Resist the proud, but gives grace to the lowly. Let us therefore cleave unto those whom grace is given from Elohim. Let us clothe ourselves in concord, being lowly-minded and temperate, holding ourselves aloof from all backbiting and evil speaking, being justified by works and not by words. For he says, He that says much shall hear also again. Does the ready talker think to be righteous? Blessed is the offspring of a woman that lives but a short time. Be not you abundant in words. Let our praise be with Elohim and not of ourselves. For Elohim hates them that praise themselves. Let the testimony to our well-doing be given by others as it was given unto our fathers who were righteous. Boldness and arrogance and daring are for them that are accursed of Elohim, but forbearance and humility and gentleness are with them that are blessed of Elohim. This is how we judge the fruits of each other. Chapter 31. Let us therefore cleave unto his blessing, and let us see what are the ways of blessing. Let us study the records of the things that have happened from the beginning. Wherefore was our father Abraham blessed? Was it not because he wrought righteousness and truth through faith? Isaac, with confidence, as knowing the future, was led a willing sacrifice. Jacob, with humility, departed from his land because of his brother, and went unto Laban and served, and the twelve tribes of Israel were given unto him. 
If any man will consider them one by one in sincerity, he shall understand the magnificence of the gifts that are given by him. For, that was chapter 32, for uh, of Jacob are all the priests and Levites who minister unto the altar of Elohim. Of him is the master Yahusha as concerning the flesh. Of him are kings and rulers and governors in the line of Judah. Yea, and the rest of his tribes are held in no small honor, seeing the Elohim promise, saying, Your seed shall be as the stars of heaven. They all therefore were glorified and magnified, not through themselves or their own works, or the righteous doing which they wrought, but through his will. And so we, having been called through his will in Yahushua HaMashiach, are not justified through ourselves or through our own wisdom or understanding or piety or works which we wrought in the holiness of heart, but through faith, whereby the Almighty Elohim justified all men that have been from the beginning, to whom the glory forever and ever. Amen. Chapter 33. What then must we do, brethren? We Must we idly abstain from doing good and forsake love? May the Master never allow this to befall us, at least. But let us hasten with instancy and zeal to accomplish every good work. For the Creator and Master of the universe himself rejoices in his works. For by his exceeding great might he established the heavens, and in his incomprehensible wisdom he set them in order. And the earth he separated from the water that surrounds it, and he set in firm on the sure foundation of his own will. And the living creatures which walk upon it he commanded to exist by his own ordinance. Having before created the sea and the living creatures therein, he enclosed it by his own power. Above all, as the most excellent and exceeding great work of his intelligence, with his sacred and faultless hands, he formed man in the impress of his own image. For thus saith, saith Elohim, let us make man after our image and after our likeness. And Elohim made man, male and female made he them. So having furnished all these things, he praised them and blessed them and said, Increase and multiply. We have seen that all the righteous were adorned in good works. Yes, and Yahuwah himself, having adorned himself with worlds, rejoiced. Seeing then that we have this pattern, let us conform ourselves with all diligence to his will. Let us with all our strength work the work of righteousness. Chapter 34. The good workman receives the bread of his work with boldness, but the slothful and careless dares not to look his employer in the face. It is therefore needful that we should be zealous unto well-doing, for of him are all things. Since he forewarns us, saying, Behold, Yahuwah, and his reward is before his face to recompense each man according to his work. He exhorts us, therefore, to believe on him with our whole heart, and to be not idle nor careless unto every good work. Let our boast and our confidence be in him. Let us submit ourselves to his will. Let us mark the whole host of his angels, how they stand by and minister unto his will. For the scripture says, Ten thousands of ten thousands stood by him, and thousands of thousands ministered unto him. And they cried aloud, Holy, holy, holy is Yahweh Sabaoth, all his creation is full of glory. Yes, and let us ourselves then, being gathered together in concord, with intentness of heart, cry unto him as from one mouth earnestly that we may be made partakers of his great and glorious promises. For he says, Eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and it has not entered into the heart of man what great things he has prepared for them that patiently await him. Chapter 35. How blessed and marvelous are the gifts of Elohim, dearly beloved! Life in immortality, splendor in righteousness, truth in boldness, faith in confidence, temperance in sanctification, and all these things fall under our apprehension. What then? What do you think are the things preparing for them that patiently await him? The Creator and Father of the ages, all the holy or un the Holy One himself knows their number and their beauty. Let us therefore contend that we may be found in the number of those that patiently await him to the end that we may be partakers of his promised gifts. But how shall this be, dearly beloved? If our mind be fixed through faith towards Elohim, if we seek out those things which are well-pleasing and acceptable unto him, if we accomplish such 
things as beseem his faultless will and follow the way of truth, casting off from ourselves all unrighteousness and iniquity, covetousness, strifes, malignities and deceits, whisperings and backbitings, hatred of Elohim, pride and arrogance, vainglory and inhospitality. For they that do these things are hateful to Elohim, and not only to them that do them, but they also that consent unto them. For the scripture says, But unto the sinner, said Elohim, Wherefore do you declare mine ordinances and take my covenant upon your lips? Yet you did hate instruction and did cast away my words behind you. If you saw a thief, you did keep company with him, and with the adulterers you did set your portion. Your mouth multiplied wickedness, and your tongue wove deceit. You sat and spake against your brother, and against the son of your mother you did lay a stumbling block. These things you have done, and I kept silence. You thought, unrighteous man, that I should be like unto you. I will convict you, and I will set your face to face with yourself. Now understand you this, these things, that you that forget Elohim, lest at any time he sees you as a lion, and there be none to deliver. The sacrifice of praise shall glorify me, and there is the way wherein I will show him the salvation of Elohim. 36. This is the way, dearly beloved. Chapter 36. This is the way, dearly beloved, wherein we found our salvation, even Yahushua HaMashiach, the high priest of our offerings, the guardian and helper of our weakness. Through him let us look steadfastly under the heights of the heavens. Through him we behold as in a mirror his faultless and most excellent visage. Through him the eyes of our hearts were opened. Through him our foolish and darkened mind springs up unto the light. Through him the master willed that we should taste of the immortal knowledge who being the brightness of his majesty is so much greater than the angels as he has inherited a more excellent name. For so it is written, who makes his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. But of his son, the master said this way, You are my son, I this day have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance, and the ends of the earth for your possession. And again he says unto him, Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Who then are these enemies? They that are wicked and resist his will. Chapter 37. Let us therefore enlist ourselves, brethren, with all earnestness in his faultless ordinances. Let us mark the soldiers that are enlisted under our rulers, how exactly, how readily, how submissively they execute the orders given them. All are not perfect, nor rulers of thousands, nor rulers of hundreds, nor rulers of fifties, and so forth. But each man in his own rank executes the orders given by the king and the governors. The great without the small cannot exist, neither the small without the great. There is a certain mixture in all things, and therein is utility. Let us take our body as an example. The head without the feet is nothing, so likewise the feet without the head are nothing. Even the smallest limbs of our body are necessary and useful for the whole body. But all the members conspire and unite in subjection that, we, that the whole body might be saved. Chapter 38. So in our case, let the whole body be saved in Yahushua HaMashiach, and let each man be subject unto his neighbor, according as also he was appointed with his special grace. Let not the strong neglect the weak. Let me read that again. Let not the strong neglect the weak, and let the weak respect the strong. Let the rich minister and aid to the poor, and let the poor give thanks to Elohim, because he has given him one through whom his wants may be supplied. Let the wise display his wisdom, not in words, but in good works. He that is lowly in mind, let him not bear testimony to himself, but leave testimony to be borne to him by his neighbor. He that is pure in the flesh, let him be so, and not boast, knowing that it is another who bestows his continence upon him. Let us consider, brethren, of what matter we were made, who and what manner of beings we were, when we came into this world, from what a sepulchre and what darkness he that molded and created us brought us into his world, 
having prepared his benefits aforehand ere ever we were born. Seeing therefore that we have all these things from him, we ought in all things to give thanks to him whom to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Chapter 39. Senseless and stupid and foolish and ignorant men jeer and mock at us, desiring that they themselves should be exalted in their imaginations. For what power has a mortal, or what strength has a child of earth? For it is written, There was no form before mine eyes, only I heard a breath and a voice. What then? Shall a mortal be clean in the sight of Yahuwah? Or shall a man be unblameable for his works? Seeing that, he is, seeing that he is distrustful against his servants and notes some perversity against his angels. Nay, the heaven is not clean in his sight. Away then, you that dwell in houses of clay, or of even of the same clay we ourselves are made. He smote them like a moth, and from the morn even to even, to, I'm sorry, from morn to even, they are no more. Because they could not secure themselves, they perished. He breathed on them and they died because they had no wisdom. But call thou, if perchance one shall obey you, or if you shall see one of the holy angels, for wrath kills the foolish man, and envy slays him that has gone astray. And I have seen fools throwing out roots, but forthwith their habitation was eaten up. Far be their sons from safety. May they be mocked at the gates of inferiors, and there shall be none to deliver them. For the things which are prepared for them, the righteous shall eat, but they themselves shall not be delivered from evils. Chapter 40. For as much then as these things are manifest beforehand, and we have searched unto the depths of the divine knowledge, we ought to do all things in order, as many as the Master has commanded us to perform at their appointed seasons. Now the offerings and ministrations he commanded to be performed with care, and not to be done rashly or in disorder, but at fixed times and seasons. And where and by whom he would have them performed, he himself fixed by his supreme will, that all things being done with piety according to his good pleasure might be acceptable to his will. They therefore that make their offerings at the appointed seasons are acceptable and blessed. For while they follow the instructions of the master, they cannot go wrong. For unto the high priest his proper services have been assigned, and to the priests their proper office is appointed, and upon the Levites their proper ministrations are laid. The layman is bound by the layman's ordinances. Chapter 41. Let each of you, brethren, in his own order give thanks unto Elohim, maintaining a good conscience, and not transgressing the appointed rule of his service, but acting with all seamless, seam, seamliness, seamliness, seamliness. My, I'm sorry, seamliness. Not in every place, brethren, are the continual daily sacrifices offered, or the free will offerings, or the sin offerings, and the trespass offerings, but in Jerusalem alone. And even there, the offering is not made in every place, but before the sanctuary in the court of the altar, and this too through the high priest and aforesaid ministers, after that the victim to be offered has been inspected for blemishes. They therefore who do anything contrary to the seemly ordinance of his will, will receive death as a penalty. You see, brethren, in proportion as greater knowledge has been vouchsafed unto us, so much the more are we exposed to danger. The apostles received the gospel for us from the master, Yahushua HaMashiach. Yahushua was sent forth from Elohim. So then Mashiach is from Elohim, and the apostles are from Mashiach. Both therefore came of the will of Elohim in the appointed order. Having therefore received a charge, and having been fully assured through the resurrection of our master Yahushua HaMashiach, and confirmed in the word of Elohim with full assurance of the Ruach HaKodesh, they went forth with the glad tidings that the kingdom of Elohim should come. So preaching everywhere, in country and town, they appointed their first fruits, when they approved them by the Spirit to be bishops and deacons unto them that should believe. And this they did in no new fashion, for indeed it had been written concerning bishops and deacons from very ancient times. For thus says the scripture in a certain place, I will appoint their bishops in righteousness and their deacons in faith. Chapter 43. And what marvel if, if they which were entrusted in Mashiach with such a work by Elohim appointed the aforesaid persons? 
seeing that even the blessed Moshe, who was a faithful servant in all his house, recorded for a sign in the sacred books all things that were enjoined in him. And him also the rest of the prophets followed, bearing witness with him unto the laws that were ordained by him. For he, when jealousy arose concerning the priesthood, and there was dissension among the tribes, which of them was adorned with the glorious name, commanded the twelve chiefs of the tribes to bring him rods inscribed with the name of each tribe. And he took them and tied them and sealed them with the signet rings of the chief of the tribes and put them away in the tabernacle of the testimony on the table of Elohim. And having shut the tabernacle, he sealed the keys and likewise also the doors. And he said unto them, Brethren, the tribe whose rod shall bud, this has Elohim chosen to be priests and ministers unto him. Now when the morning came, he called together all Israel, even six hundred thousand men, and showed the seals to the chief of the tribes, and opened the tabernacle of the testimony, and drew forth the rods. And the rod of Aaron was found not only with buds, but also bearing fruit. What think ye, dearly beloved? Did not Moshe know beforehand that this would come to pass? Assuredly he knew it. But that disorder might not arise in Israel, he did this to the end that the name of the true and only Elohim might be glorified, to whom he the glory forever and ever. Amen. Chapter 44. And our apostles knew through our master Yahushua HaMashiach that there would be strife over the name of the bishop's office. For this cause, therefore, having received complete foreknowledge, they appointed aforesaid persons, and afterwards they provided a continuance, that if these should fall asleep, other approved men should succeed to their administration. Those, therefore, who were appointed by them, or afterward by other men of repute, with the con consent of the whole assembly, and having ministered unblameably to the flock of Mashiach in lowliness of mind, peacefully and with all modesty, and for long time having borne a good report with all these men we consider to be unjustly thrust out from their ministration. For it will be no light sin for us if we thrust out those who have offered the gifts of the bishop's office unblameably and holy. Blessed are those presbyters who have gone before, seeing that their departure was fruitful and ripe, for they have no fear lest anyone should remove them from their appointed place. For we see that you have displaced certain persons, though they were living honorably, from the ministration which had been respected by them blamelessly. Chapter 45, but you, contentious brethren, and jealous about the things that pertain unto salvation, you have searched the scriptures which are true, which were given through the Ruach HaKodesh, and you know that nothing unrighteous or counterfeit is written in them. You will not find that the righteous person have been thrust out by holy men. Righteous men were persecuted, but it was by the lawless. They were imprisoned, but it was the unholy. They were stoned by transgressors. They were slain by those who had conceived a detestable and unrighteous jealousy. Suffering these things, they endured nobly. For what must we say, brethren? Was Daniel cast into the lion's den by them that feared Elohim? Or were Ananias and Azarias and Mishael shut up in the furnace of fire by them that professed the excellent and glorious worship of the Most High? Far be this from our thoughts. Who then were they who were they that did these things? Abominable men, and full of all wickedness, were stirred up to such a pitch of wrath as to being cruel, suffering upon them that served Elohim in a holy and blameless purpose, not knowing that the Most High is the champion and protector of them that in a pure conscience serve his excellent name, unto whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. But they that endured patiently in confidence inherited glory and honor. They were exalted and had their names recorded by Elohim in their memorial forever and ever. Amen. To such examples as these, therefore, brethren, we also ought to cleave. For it is written, Cleave unto the saints, for they that cleave unto them shall be sanctified. And again, he says in another place, With the guiltless man you shall be guiltless, and with the elect you shall be elect, and with the crooked you shall deal crookedly. Let us therefore cleave to the guiltless and righteous, and these are the elect of Elohim. Wherefore are the strifes and wraths and factions and divisions and war among you? Have we not one Elohim and one Mashiach and one spirit of grace that was shed upon us? And is there not one calling in Mashiach? 
Wherefore do we tear and rend asunder the members of Mashiach and stir up factions against our own body and reach such a pitch of folly as to forget that we are members one of another? Remember the words of Yahusha our master, for he said, Woe unto that man, it were good for him if he had not been born, rather than that at he should offend one of mine elect. It were better for one of him if it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about him and be cast into the sea than that he should pervert one of mine elect. Your division has perverted many. It has brought many to despair, many doubting, and all of us to sorrow, and your sedition still continues. Chapter 47. Take up the epistle of the blessed Paul the Apostle. What wrote he first unto you in the beginning of the gospel? Of a truth he charged you in the spirit concerning himself and Cephas and Apollos, because even that I'm sorry, because that even then you had made parties or divisions, yet that making of parties brought lesson upon you, for you were partisans of apostles that were highly reputed and of a man approved in their sight. But now mark you who they are that have perverted you and diminished the glory of your renowned love for the brotherhood. It is, a sh it is shameful, dearly beloved, yes, utterly shameful and unworthy of your conduct in Mashiach, that it should be reported that the very steadfast and ancient assembly of the Corinthians, for the sake of one or two persons, makes seditions against its presbyters or leaders, whatever, however you want to call that word. And this report has reached not only into us, but them also which differ from us, so that you even heap blasphemies of the name of Yahuwah by very reason of your folly, and moreover create peril for yourselves. Chapter 48. Let us therefore root this out quickly, and let us fall down before the master and entreat him with tears, that he may show himself propitious and be reconciled unto us, and may restore us to the seemly and pure conduct which belongs to our, the love of our brethren. For this is a gate of righteousness opened unto life, as it is written, Open me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter thereby and preach Yahuwah. This is the gate of Yahuwah. The righteous shall enter in thereby. Seeing then that many gates are opened, this is that gate which is in righteousness, even that which is in Mashiach, whereby all are blessed that have entered in and direct their path in holiness and in righteousness, performing all things without confusion. Let a man be faithful. Let him be able to expound deep saying. Let him be wise in discernment of word. Let him be strenuous in deed. Let him be pure. For so much more ought he to be lowly in mind, in proportion as he seems to be the greater. And he ought to seek the common advantage of all, not his own. Chapter 49. Let him that has love in Mashiach fulfill the commandments of Yahuwah. Who can declare the bond of the love of Elohim? Who is sufficient to tell the majesty of its beauty? The height whereunto love exalts is unspeakable. Love joins us unto Elohim. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love endures all things, is long-suffering in all things. There is nothing coarse, nothing arrogant in love. Love has no divisions. Love makes no seditions. Love does all things in concord. In love were all the elect of Elohim made perfect. Without love, nothing is well-pleasing unto Elohim. In the love, uh, I'm sorry, in love, the master took us unto himself. For the love which he had towards us, Yehusha HaMashiach, our master, has given his blood for us by the will of Elohim, and his flesh for our flesh, and his life for our lives. Chapter 50. You see, dearly beloved, how great and marvelous a thing is love, and there is no declaring its perfection. Who is sufficient to be found therein, save those to whom Elohim shall vouchsafe it? Let us therefore entreat and ask of his mercy, that we may be found blameless in love, standing apart from the facetious of men. Yeah. Factitiousness. <clears throat> Chapter 50. I'm going to do that again. Chapter 50. You see, dearly beloved, how great... All right, so I'm doing chapter 50, starting at chapter 50. You see, dearly beloved, how great and marvelous a thing is love, and there is no declaring its perfection. Who is sufficient to be found therein, to save those to whom Elohim shall vouchsafe it? Let us therefore entreat and ask of his mercy, 
that we may be found blameless in love, standing apart from the factitiousness of men. All the generations from Adam unto this day have passed away, but, but they that by Elohim's grace were perfected in love dwell in the abode of the pious, and they shall be made manifest in the visitation of the kingdom of Elohim. For it is written, Enter into the closet for a very little while, until my anger and mine wrath shall pass away, and I will remember a good day and will raise you from your tombs. Blessed were we, dearly beloved, if we should be doing the commandments of Elohim in the concord of love, to the end that our sins through love may be forgiven us. For it is written, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom Yahuwah shall impute no sin, neither is guile in his mouth. This declaration of blessedness was pronounced upon them that have been elected by Elohim through Yahushua HaMashiach, our master, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Chapter 51 For all our transgressions which we have committed through any of the wiles of the adversary, let us entreat that we may obtain forgiveness. Yes, and they also who set themselves up as leaders of factions and division ought to look to the common ground of hope. For such as walk in the fear and love desire that they themselves should fall into suffering rather than their neighbors. And they pronounce condemnation against themselves rather than against the harmony which has been handed down to us nobly and righteously. For it is good for a man to make confession of his trespasses rather than to harden his heart. As the heart of those was hardened who made sedition against Moshe, the servant of Elohim, whose condemnation was clearly manifest. For they went down into Hades alive, and death shall be their shepherd. Pharaoh and his, and his hosts and all the rulers of Egypt, their chariots and their horsemen, were overwhelmed in the depths of the Red Sea and perished for none other reason but because their foolish hearts were hardened after that the signs and the wonders had been wrought in the land of Egypt by the hand of Moshe, the servant of Elohim. 52. The master, brethren, has need of nothing at all. He desires not anything of man save to confess unto him. For the elect, David says, I will confess unto Yahuwah, and it shall please him more than a young calf that grows horns and hooves. Let the poor see it and rejoice. And again he says, Sacrifice to Elohim, a sacrifice of praise, and pay your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of your affliction, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. For a sacrifice unto Elohim is a broken spirit. Chapter 53. For you know and know well the sacred scriptures, dearly beloved, and ye have searched unto the oracles of Elohim. Write these things, therefore, to put you in remembrance. When Moshe went up into the mountain, and had spent forty days and forty nights fasting and humiliation, Elohim said unto him, Moshe, Moshe, come down quickly hence, for my people whom you lead forth from the land of Egypt have wrought iniquity. They have transgressed quickly out of the way which you did command unto them. They have made for themselves molten images. And Yahweh said unto him, I have spoken unto you once and twice, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is stiff-necked. Let me destroy them utterly, and I will blot out their names from under the heaven. And I will make of you a great nation, and a wonderful and numerous more than this. And Moshe said, No, not so, Yahweh, Forgive this people of their sin, or blot me also out of the book of the living. O oh, mighty love, O oh, unsurpassable perfection, the servant is bold with his master. He asks forgiveness for the multitude, or he demands that himself also be blotted out with him. Chapter 54. Who therefore is noble among you? Who is compassionate? Who is filled with love? Let him say, If by reason of me there be faction and strife and divisions, I retire. I depart where you will have me, and I will do that which is ordered by the people. Only let the flock of Mashiach be at peace with its duly appointed leaders. He that shall have done this shall win for himself great renown in Mashiach, and every place will receive him, for the earth is Yahuwah's and the fullness thereof. Thus have they done and will do, that live as citizens of that kingdom of Elohim, which brings no regrets. Chapter 55 But to bring forward examples of Gentiles also, many kings and ru rulers when some season of pestilence pressed upon them, being taught by oracles have delivered themselves over to death, that they might rescue their fellow citizens through their own blood. Many have retired from their own cities, that they might have no more seditions. 
we know that many among ourselves have delivered themselves to bondage, that they might ransom others. Many have sold themselves to slavery, and receiving the price paid for themselves, have fed others. Many women, being strengthened through the grace of Elohim, have performed many deeds. The blessed Judith, when the city was beleaguered, asked of the elders that she might be suffered to go forth into the camp of the aliens. So she exposed herself to peril and went for, forth for love of her country and of her people, which were beleaguered. And Yahuwah delivered Holofernes into the hand of the woman. To no less peril did Esther also, who was perfect in faith, expose herself that she might deliver the twelve tribes of Israel when they were on point to perish. On the point to perish. For through her fasting and her humiliation, she entreated all the all-seeing master, the Elohim of the ages, and he, seeing the humility of her soul, delivered the people for whose sake she encountered the peril. Chapter 56. Therefore, let us also make intercession for them that are in any transgression, that forbearance and humility may be given them, to the end that they may yield not unto us, but unto the will of Elohim. For so shall the compassionate remembrance of them with Elohim and the saints be fruitful unto them and be perfect. Let us accept chastisement, whereat no man ought to be vexed, dearly beloved. The admonition which we give one to another is good and exceeding useful, for it joins us unto the will of Elohim. For thus says the Holy Word, Yahuwah has indeed chastened me and has not delivered me over unto death. For whom Yahuwah loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. For the righteous, it is said, shall chasten me in mercy and shall reprove me. But let not the mercy of sinners anoint my head. And again he says, Blessed is the man whom Yahuwah has reproved, and refuse not you the admonition of the Almighty. For he causes pain and restores again. He has smitten and his hands have healed. Six times shall he rescue you from afflictions, and the seventh no evil shall touch you. In famine he shall deliver you from death, and in war he shall release you from the arm of the sword. And from the scourge of the tongue he shall hide you, and you shall not be afraid when evils approach. You shall laugh at the unrighteous and wicked, and of the wild beasts you shall not be afraid, for the wild beasts shall be at peace with you. Then shall you know that your house shall be at peace, and the abode of your tabernacle shall not go wrong. And you shall know that your seed is many, and your children as the plenteous herbage of the field. And you shall come to the grave as ripe corn reaped in due season, or as the heap of the threshing floor gathered together at the right time. You see, dearly beloved, how great protection there is for them that are chastened by the Master. For being a kind Father, He chastens us to the end that we may obtain mercy through His holy chastisement. Chapter 57 You therefore that, are, that laid the foundation of the sedition, submit yourselves unto the leaders, and receive chastisement unto repentance, bending the knees of your heart. Learn to submit yourselves, laying aside the arrogant and proud stubbornness of your tongue. For it is better for you to be found little in the flock of Mashiach, and to have your name on Elohim's roll, than to be had in exceeding honor, and yet be cast out from the hope of him. For thus says all the virtuous wisdom, Behold, I will pour out for you a saying of my breath, and I will teach you my word. Because I called and you obeyed not, and I held out words and you heeded not, but made my counsels of none effect and were disobedient unto my reproofs. Therefore I also will laugh at your destruction, and will rejoice over you when ruin comes upon you, and when confusion overtakes you suddenly, and your overthrow is at hand like a whirlwind. Or when you call upon me, yet I will not hear you. Evil men shall seek me, and not find me, for they hated wisdom, and they chose not the fear of Yahuwah. Neither would they give heed unto my counsels, but mocked at my reproofs. Therefore they shall eat the fruits of their own way, and shall be filled with their own ungodliness." For because they wronged babes, they shall be slain, and inquisition shall destroy the ungodly. But he that hears me shall dwell safely, trusting in hope, and shall be quiet from all fear of all evil. Chapter 58. Let us therefore be obedient unto his most holy and glorious name, thereby escaping the threatenings which were spoken of old by the mouth of wisdom against them which disobey, that we may dwell, in safe, dwell safely, trusting in the most holy name of his majesty. Receive your counsel, and ye shall have no occasion of regret. For as Elohim lives, and the Master Yahushua HaMashiach lives, and the Holy Spirit, who are the faith and the hopes of the elect, so surely shall he, who with lowliness of mind 
and an instant in gentleness has without regretfulness performed the ordinances and commandments that are given by Elohim, be enrolled and have a name among the number of them that are saved through Yahushua HaMashiach, through whom is the glory unto him forever and ever. Amen. Chapter 59. But if certain persons should be disobedient unto the words spoken by him through us, let them understand that they will entangle themselves in no slight transgression and danger. But we shall be guiltless of this sin, and we will ask, with instancy of prayer and supplication, that the Creator of the universe may guard intact unto the end of the number of the end the number that has been numbered of his elect throughout the whole world, through his beloved son Yahushua Hamashiach, through whom he called us from darkness to light, from ignorance to the full knowledge of the glory of his name. Grant unto us, Yahuwah, that we may set our hope on your name, which is the primal source of all creation. And open the eyes of our hearts that we may know you, who alone abides highest in the lofty, holy in the holy, who layest low in the insolence of the proud, who sets the lowly on high and brings the lofty low, who makes the, ri who makes the rich and makes the poor, who kills and makes alive, who alone is the benefactor of spirits and the Elohim of all flesh who looks into the abysses, who scans the work of the man, the succour of them that are in peril, the saviour of them that are in despair, the creator and overseer of every spirit, who multiplies the nations upon the earth, and has chosen out from all men those that love you through Yahushua HaMashiach, your beloved Son, through whom you did instruct us, did sanctify us, and honour us. We beseech you, Yahuwah, our Master, to be our help and succour. Save those among us who are in tribulation, have mercy on the lowly, lift up the fallen, show yourself unto the needy, heal the ungodly, convert the wanderers of your people, feed the hungry, release our prisoners, raise up the weak, comfort the faint-hearted, let all the nations know that you are the Elohim alone, and Yehusha HaMashiach is your son, and we are your people and the sheep of your pasture. Chapter 60. Though through your operations did make manifest the everlasting fabric of the world, you, Yahuwah, did create the earth. You that are faithful through all generations, righteous in your judgments, marvelous in strength and excellence. You that are wise in creating and prudent in establishing that which you have made, that are good in the things which are seen and faithful with them that trust on you, pitiful and compassionate. Forgive us our iniquities and our unrighteousness and our transgressions and shortcomings. Lay not to our account every sin of your servants and your handmaids, but cleanse us with the cleansing of your truth and guide our steps to walk in holiness and righteousness and singleness of heart and do such things that are good and well-pleasing in, 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 in your sight in the sight of our rulers. Yes, Master, make your face to shine upon us in peace for our good that we may be sheltered by your mighty hand and delivered from every sin by your uplifted arm and deliver us from them that hate us wrongfully. Give concord and peace to us to all that dwell on the earth that you gave to our fathers, that they call on you in faith and in truth with holiness, that we may be saved while we render obedience to your almighty and most excellent name and our rulers and governors upon the earth. Chapter 61. You, Yahweh our master, has given them the power of sovereignty through your excellent and unspeakable might, that we, knowing the glory and honor which you have given them, may submit ourselves unto them and nothing resisting your will. Grant unto them therefore, O Yahuwah, health, peace, concord, stability, that they may administer the government which you have given them without failure. For you, O heavenly master, king of the ages, give to the sons of men glory and honor and power over all things that are upon the earth. Do you, Yahuwah, direct their counsel according to that which is good and well-pleasing in your sight, that administering in peace and gentleness with godliness, that power which you have given them, they may obtain your favor. O oh, you who alone are able to do these things, far more exceeding good than those for us, we praise you through the high priest and guardian of our souls, Yahushua HaMashiach, through whom be the glory and majesty unto you both now and for all generations forever and ever. Amen. Chapter 62. As touching those things which benefit our belief and are most useful for our virtuous life, such as would guide their steps in holiness and righteousness, we have written fully unto you, brethren. For concerning faith and repentance and genuine love and temperance and sobriety 
and patience we have handled every argument, putting you in remembrance that you ought to please Almighty Elohim in righteousness and truth and long suffering with holiness, laying aside malice and pursuing concord in love and peace, being instant in gentleness, even as our fathers of whom we spake before, pleased him, being lowly minded toward their Father and Elohim and Creator, and towards all men. And we have put you in mind of these things, the mere, the more gladly, since we know that uh, that. Sorry, let's start again. First <laughs> Clement sixty two three. And we have put you in mind of these things, the more gladly, since we knew well that we were writing to men who are faithful and highly accounted, and have diligently searched unto the oracles of the teaching of Elohim. Chapter sixty three. Therefore, it is right for us to give heed to so great and many examples, and to submit the neck and occupying the place of obedience to take our side with them that are the leaders of our souls, that ceasing from this foolish dissension, we may attain unto the goal which lies before us in truthfulness, keeping aloof from every fault. For you will give us great joy and gladness if you render obedience unto the things written by us through the Ruach HaKodesh, and root out the unrighteous anger of your jealousy, according to the entreaty which we have made for peace and concord in this letter. And we have also sent faithful and prudent men that have walked among us from youth unto an old age unblameably, who shall also be witnesses between you and us. And this we have done that you might know that we have had and still have every solicitude that you should be speedily at peace. Finally, chapter 64. Finally, may the all-seeing Elohim and master of spirits of all flesh who chose the master Yahushua HaMashiach and us through him for a peculiar people grant unto every soul that is called after his excellent and holy name faith, fear, peace, patience, long-suffering, temperance, chastity, and soberness that they may be well-pleasing unto his name through our high priest and guardian Yahushua HaMashiach through whom unto him be glory and majesty, might and honor both now and forever and ever. Amen. Last chapter, 65. Now send you back speedily unto us our messengers, Claudius, Ephibus, and Valerius Bito, Bito, together with Fortunatus also, in peace and with joy, to the end that they may the more quickly report the peace and concord which is prayed for and earnestly desired by us, that we also may the more speedily rejoice over your good order. The grace of our master, Yahushua HaMashiach, be with you and with all men in all places who have been called by Elohim and through him, through whom be the glory and honor, power and greatness, eternal dominion unto him from the ages past and forever and ever. Amen. And that is the end of the book of First Clement to the Corinthians. I pray it's a blessing for you and may consider the things that are written in here. Shalom.
your name I know you are bigger than this hurricane and I deny the lies of the devil's tongue you have given me the power to overcome bigger waves are coming on I lift your name
heard. We let ourselves be heard, always choosing to fight for what's right. Now don't take fight like a bird. The hunt is becoming vision blur red. With only one thought in our heads, our presence, our mission, the reason why we exist. We're sorry.